up in the Bahamas tonight, the weekend edition. The Prime Minister mulling over the next steps for the port. Educational officials addressing reforms. Elevation Award winners shine. And in sports, woes continue in Miami for Jazz and the Marlins. The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition, starts now. Welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. I'm Jiminita Swain. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping news, Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis in Grand Bahama over the weekend. During his visit, he engaged in a private meeting with members of the Progressive Liberal Party regarding the ongoing dispute between the government and the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Last week, government issued a demand letter to the Port Authority seeking $300 million for expenses related to services and infrastructure. I came to Freeport this morning uh, to attend the funeral of Sower Councillor uh, Nesbitt um, at Ascension Church. And since I was here, um, PLPs decided that we should gather and have a family conversation on what's happening in the port and to get from the horse's mouth what is exactly happening and what the position is that we are taking. Some 269 Haitian migrants have been taken to a temporary facility in Matthew Town, Inagua. They were apprehended Saturday afternoon. It's believed they were headed to the Turks and Caicos Islands and were intercepted in Bahamian waters. More details in a later newscast. In other news, efforts underway to address low national test scores of Bahamian students within the public school system. This initiative from education officials comes just days after the Inter-American Development Bank released a report showing that the education outcome of students is not up to par with other high-income countries, noting that Bahamian students have extremely low levels of learning in two key subject areas. Minister of Education, Technical and Vocational Training, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, says education reform will require a coordinated focus from all sectors, and so her ministry will engage the services of the University of the Bahamas to address the existing deficiencies in education. We don't know yet why our students do not soar in these examinations, because we know they have, they have the ability. So we're doing a number of um, research projects, which I've spoken about quite a bit. One of them is um, by the University of the Bahamas. They talk about factors that impact student learning outcomes. What impacts a child doing well or not doing well. So we, we got a preliminary report and we're reviewing that. Additionally, and we were hoping to sign today, but I don't think it's going to happen today, we are doing a study in mathematics because um, our students tend not to do well in, in goodly numbers with mathematics. So we're going to be, be looking at um, the factors that influence performance in mathematics. We, in science, that's another challenging area. We're bringing in a, an education officer with singular focus for science and primary school students to start them early. Minister Hannah Martin says her ministry will also place more efforts on technical education. We've also determined that BGCSE is not the uh, premier measurement of a child's performance. The technical and vocational component and a lot of students do very well they're, they're outstanding i mean they and, and they're very bright young people i met one yesterday he's at btvi doing construction and he's working somewhere and he took that job because he said he wants to learn materials so he's very he's very clear on why he's doing what he's doing but we are looking at uh, the current the correlating or the um parallel um certifications in the technical and vocational exams so that when you see student performance you might see the bgcse but you'll also see maybe city and guilds and other um uh, certifications which gives you an indication of how young people are faring on public service drivers better known to many as jitney drivers at times can be a menace on the streets of the capital not a recent public bus town hall meeting with owners and operators officials from the police traffic division shared some observations on the driver's code of conduct we see the bus stops with buses filled with passengers parked with the hazard light blinking waiting for the buses to be filled the capacity before they take the waiting passengers to their destination. And what that creates, that creates a backup of traffic in busy areas. We all see it. 
Uh, let's use Bay Street in the area of Hufferson Sun. Once an officer is not there, a bus driver will park on that bus stop and tell someone, and tell either the bus is filled or until someone tells them to move. We have bus drivers. Wherever a passenger says bus stop, that becomes a bus stop. Also, wherever there's a passenger or there's a person on the outside flagging a bus, that is a bus stop. That is a no-no. Now, I'm not going to put everything on the bus drivers because we know that there are markings. Some markings are not there where the bus stop should be. But we all know where we should not stop as bus drivers. That is at an intersection. Well, the Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources officially introduced members of the National Advisory on Agriculture recently. The Honorable Jomo Gamble noted that this is a major plank in government's agenda to self-sufficiency while reducing the huge food import bill. The committee will comprise of approximately 40 individuals. And this committee will be divided into three groups. The first group is that of members the second, island representatives, and the third, technical advisors slash assistants. Now, if I'll break them down into groups, um, the members group represents the core or nucleus of the committee. Each member will head a subcommittee, of which there are 10. Well, the cabinet appointed body of 40 persons is headed by Godfrey Aeneas. We wanted to widen it up and bring more people to the table uh, because too many of our family islands are left out and there are many issues that, that affect them like climate change and, and you know when I was <clears throat> in the ministry many years ago one of the programs we had was the construction of feeder roads bringing new land into production and the construction of providing farmers with uh, fencing and, and material to protect the livestock and there's a lot of infrastructural work to be done uh, in terms of upgrading the infrastructure in the agricultural sector. So there's a lot of work to be done. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. More news in a moment. Dozens of students and teachers gathered in the foyer of the Ministry of Education yesterday to showcase their many talents at the Agricultural Science Exhibition. Every year, the Agricultural Science Unit, the Department of Education, have an exhibition to showcase what it is that schools are doing in their agricultural science programs. So here we have a variety of plants, seedlings, um, fruits and vegetables, as well as eggs and meat products. So that persons can see that schools are really doing agriculture and they're doing it well. That's Senior Education Officer Patrice Green, who adds that the goal is to make agricultural careers more appealing to kids. So we're just showing them the whole process of from growing to the sale of items so that they can see that you can really make an income out of agricultural science and you can also be an entrepreneur at the end of the day. We heard from schools like C.H. Reeves Junior High School who has an impressive crop program. We do greens mainly, bok choy, cabbage, onions, tomatoes, cabbage, carrots sometimes. A small, small program, mini farm. We, we lock soil, we use um, container farming mostly, putting tires in soil and grower crops. T.A. Thompson also participated under a reduce, reuse, recycle theme. The whole purpose of it is to show you that you don't have to be go extravagant, you don't have to use expensive products in order to grow stuff for you to eat. 
because if you look here, you see we have a watering bottle. It has the holes on the top so that you can easily water your plants like a watering can. You don't have to go and buy an expensive watering can from the store. Also, we have the same bottle cut in half that you can use as a flower pot. All you do is just poke holes in the bottom and then you, you don't have to go and buy an expensive flower pot. Also, we have cups that we use and when they get this tall, you can just knock around it, take it out and transplant it and H.O. Nash Junior High School with its livestock farming program. Basically, it's just like selling eggs, so just showing about the chickens, how our school um, takes care of the animals. After we collect the eggs out of the pen, we usually wash them, and then we let them sit out and dry. And after that, we just, if they're still wet, we wipe them down and then we pack them up and sell them. We also caught up with this H.O. Nash student who has dreams of one day becoming a farmer. My spiritual agriculture, when I first come there in grade seven, I don't like it a lot. So I put my talent and stuff in it and I put my time into it and I really like it. It's a good, it's a good program to be in. I, I hope that we will try to go in it too. Keeping you in the know with Good to Grow, I'm Leah Cooper. This portion of the news is brought to you by Folk Hall Smart Pass, the smart way to pay at the pump. Thanks for staying with us. The Urban Renewal Commission holding its annual youth competition Friday, this time focusing on issues like discipline and violence and challenging youngsters to dig deeper towards possible solutions. Our Lloyd Allen has more on this story. The Urban Renewal Commission's 2024 speech competition attracting some of the brightest minds from schools here in the capital. Taking place Friday at the Fox Hill Community Center, a show of support from several officials along with friends and family cheering on these young orators. I was just blown away by the kids, their diction, their oration. I mean, they absolutely, some of them memorized the speech. It was so good. So has the lack of corporal punishment and the freedom of speech ruined our country? No, not entirely. But have they presented challenges that we as a nation must address? Absolutely. Deadly corporal punishment has been administered to vehement children. Remember our dear little Bella, may her soul rest in heaven. I am sure that the, if the teachers in these schools were able to administer corporal punishment, that the students would have been more respectful towards them. State Minister for Urban Renewal, the Honorable Lisa Ramming, offered this advice. Go forward with courage, conviction, and with a heart full of dreams. And remember this, the world is not just waiting for you. It needs you. Urban Renewal Minister, the Honorable Keith Bell, also reinforcing why the competition is critical in achieving the organization's goals. We are all proud to be part of a very dynamic team in urban renewal because we can say that if we help someone as we pass along, then we know that our life is not in vain. Let the competition begin. Now, during the event, students competed in three divisions, including primary, junior, and senior. The presentations including various elements, including costumes, dramatic monologues, famous quotes, but more importantly, Winners. On the board, I wrote, I'm a winner uh, on my board at home, and today I won the speech competition. During your uh, presentation tonight, uh, you focus on the idea uh, that you support capital punishment. Um, tell us again why you think it's so important. I think, it, I think it's important because, like I said in speech, it instills discipline. Um, I'm grateful to God, first of all, uh, my teachers, coaches, everybody that um, contributed to this win. The competition starting with more than several dozen students, but these talented winners walking away with a number of prizes, including a trophy, laptop, and a cash prize. Urban Renewal officials say based on this recent success, they envision an even bigger event next year. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Lloyd Allen. And the Royal Bahamas Defense Force joining the world in celebrating the month of the military child for the first time this April. The enforcement agency started with the month, or rather started the month by hosting their annual family fun day and stake out with activities for the children of deployed officers. Our Charlie Jones tells us more. No man is an island. All these kids need to be appreciated, loved, and for people to know that they are there for them. 
Hearts anchored at home and at sea. The theme adopted by the Royal Bahamas Defense Force in light of the month of the military child. This month is intended to serve as a reminder of some of the challenges and difficulties faced by children in military families and the unwavering support they provide their parents. Wife of the Commodore of the Defense Force, Frederica King, says she has experienced firsthand the strenuous effects of the military on her family and saw it more than fitting to be involved in initiatives like this. So I know what I went through and by me being in the system it made me more aware of the needs of the families in the organization. Thus the welfare and morale department came about during this particular phase of my retiring. So I am passionate about family, I'm passionate about helping others and thus here I am. Also in attendance, wife of the Prime Minister, Anne-Marie Davis, who says that she is pleased that others are becoming aware of the needs of support for these children. This is raising awareness to all of us, especially people like me, who were not in tune very much with the military child and what they face and have to go through a lot more than any normal child would. Lieutenant Commander Elvis Burroughs expressing the reason for the initiative, stating that there is great anticipation for members of the community becoming more considerate to the needs of military children. With the hope that the, children, the guidance counselors and the teachers in those schools would pay special attention to those children who are affected by the deployment of their service members. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force becoming a village to the children of deployed officers in light of month of the military child. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Charlia Jones. If you see news in the making, call ZNS News at 502-3800 or email us at ZNSNews at gmail.com. Yellow Elder Garden, Ali and her cousins listen to Grammy share tales. The 70s so sweet, with themed costumes and dancing feet. Then came the brass, reaching new heights. A symphony of Bahamian nights. The 2000s, the Yellow Elder, a symbol of pride. Grammy's legacy in view as Ali dances in her Yellow Elder costume. We are alive. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount, and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. Watch them grow and make plans for them even before they're old enough to talk. You spend a lifetime of sacrifice to pave the way for their success and create a tomorrow you too can be proud of. Can you tell who is the investor? At Lend, we believe everyone who has ever put a penny aside for a future dream is an investor. If you're new to investing, let us financial experts stand ready to design plans based on your goals. Let's sit down and explore the options one-on-one -on -one and see how, together, we can make your dreams come true. Whether considering traditional investments like a new home, car, your own business, security and retirement, or your child's college fund, we take the confusion out of the process and make an investor out of you. Call 396-3225 for an appointment. Leno, your bridge to the future. This is ZNS Total Sports. Welcome to your Sunday sports, everyone. I'm Amajal Knowles, topping sports. The struggles continuing in South Florida for Bahamian baseball superstar Jazz Chisholm and his Miami Marlins. As on Saturday, they would drop another game, falling to the St. Louis Cardinals 3-1. They would drop to 0-9 on the season. 
The worst start in the franchise's 33-year history. The Miami Marlins have lost 10 consecutive games dating to last season and has dropped 13 of its past 16 at Bush Stadium. For Chisholm, he has that one grand slam to start the season, but has gotten off to a slow start, batting 194 with the lone homer. But even more troubling is just one stolen base so far on the year. The Marlins hoping to get their first win of the season in their final matchup on Sunday in their series with the Cardinals. In track news, several Bahamian elite athletes hitting the track yesterday at the Miramar Invitational in Miramar, Florida. Quarter milers Alonzo Russell and Mendel Miller would compete in the men's 400 meters. Russell would take the race in a season's best time of 45.35 seconds. Miller finishing third in 46 seconds flat. Ian Kerr also competing in the men's 200 meters where he would finish seventh. Charisma Taylor would post a season's best time in the women's 100 meter hurdles, finishing in 12.98 seconds. Well, several Bahamian athletes established new Carifta records at the meet held over the Easter holiday. Among them, men's pole vault competitor Brendan Vanderpool, who would best his previous Carifta national record and establish a new one at 5.30 meters, something he says he hopes lasts a long time. To be able to defend it for the third time, definitely, definitely exciting. I put it at 5.3 or 530 meters. So whoever's going to come after that, I hope that'll stay there for a while. But if any of y'all know, like whoever clears that, I want to know because I want to click with any person and shake their hand. I set it up pretty high and I want that to be there as long as possible. So, yeah. More from the press conference held on Friday for the World Athletics World Relays pregame show, which is expected to take place before the actual event. The meet designed to highlight some of the younger athletes, not only here at home, but throughout the region and the world. B2A's president, Jimmy Archer. Uh, I liken this event as the, 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 the DNA of track and field, where the priority of the Federation is to ensure that this becomes a legacy of our sport. And long after the World Relays would have come and gone, we can look forward to having an event that showcases not only our junior athletes, but also to consider the future of our sport, which would be our kids' athletics program. It is in direct alignment with what we hope to achieve as a federation that continues to grow and to develop young and ambitious uh, dreams of becoming one of the best countries in track and field. And in college football news, Bahamian wide receiver Prince Sharon is looking to have a breakout sophomore season for the Boise State Broncos. And if his performance from their first spring practice is any indication, he's well on his way. Strong with four catches for 71 yards and a 40-yard touchdown to finish the day. He finished up his freshman season with 12 catches for 274 yards and two scores and a 22-yard per catch average. And that's when we look at your sports on this Sunday. A check on weather when we return. This is ZNS Total Sports. Here at Immigration Care Service, you can trust us, especially if you have experienced issues or problems with the U.S. immigration at the borders. We'll do our best to provide options and solutions to immigration roadblocks so travelers can continue visiting the U.S. and residents can continue living their lives in the U.S. without worries. The best part? Our services are affordable and accessible. Take the mystery, confusion, and fear out of your immigration concerns. Contact Immigration Care Service today. For hurricane season, we got impact windows and doors. For protection, just come to our store. Plus, we got tiles to pretty up your walls and your floors. We love you bad enough for that big bad storm. For selling tiles, blank tiles, mosaic tiles, a variety of styles. Before teens get right, they gotta be rough. That's why we got the best deals in the whole Bahamas. Hey, hey. It's time now for a check on tonight's weather forecast. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean joins us in studio with the latest temperatures. Good evening, Basil. 
Oh, good evening, uh, Jim and Anita. We have partly cloudy skies this evening. Temperature at 78 degrees of relative humidity, 46%. North northeast winds at 5 miles per hour. The barometric pressure, 1,017.7 millibars. That is 30.05 inches. And your temperatures around the farming violence this evening, 75 degrees in Marshall, Babaco, Green Tull Key at 73, 73 in Freeport, Grand Bahama. The Berry Island, 75. Alistair Bimini at 73 degrees. Over in Harbor Island, 74. Rock Sound, Lutra 78 degrees, Fresh Creek Central Andros at 81, 82 in Kemp Space South Andros, Black Point Exuma 80 degrees, 78 degrees in Otto Sound, Cat Island, San Salvador, and in Arum Key, George Sound Exuma also 78 degrees, 77 in Ragged Island, Clown Sound, Long Island, and Crooked Island, Betsy Bay, Maguana 79, Ackland 79, Matthew Tiny Nagua 77, and the Turks and Caicos Islands at 83 degrees. And your boating forecast for all areas tonight. Those winds will stay out of the northeast at 10 to 15 knots, and the wave finds 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. Your high tide takes place at 7.43 this evening. And then tomorrow, Monday, in the northwestern parts of our country, the winds increase, becoming easterly at 12 to 18 knots. The wave finds building 3 to 6 feet, so caution flags will go in place tomorrow for the northwest Bahamas. Now, the high tide tomorrow takes place at 8.05 in the morning, with the low tide at 2 or 3 in the afternoon for the central and southeastern islands on Monday. Northeast winds 12 to 18 knots, wave fights 3 to 6 feet. So we're also asking small craft in the central and southeastern islands to exercise caution tomorrow. And then tomorrow is also the total eclipse of the sun, and that will take place somewhere between 10.30 and 3.30 in the afternoon. Uh, that will certainly be a partial eclipse for us here in the Bahamas, but there's some parts of uh, the northern uh, United States that will experience the totality, and that beginning with uh, the Texas area, and this is the uh, track of the um, total eclipse. Oh, certain parts of Texas, also in Memphis, Tennessee, Washington, D.C., New York, that is upper New York, where you'll be able to see the total total eclipse of the sun, and also some parts of Boston as well. But once again, for us here in the Bahamas, you will be able to see a partial eclipse. The most significant thing about this eclipse is that you would not see another total eclipse until the year 2044. And our satellite pictures are showing some clouds being advected into the northwest and central parts of our country, which will provide a little bit of cloud cover, but we expect most of that to burn off tomorrow. That will allow you to see that partial eclipse. Tonight, patchy clouds, 69 degrees, so will be a low temperature tomorrow. We're looking at mostly sunny, breezy, and quite pleasant. The high temperature tomorrow is expected to reach 77 degrees. And your extended weather forecast, lots of sunshine during the daytime right through Thursday. But come Friday, we bring some clouds showers and thunderstorms into the forecast area and that's because another frontal system will be pushing through and that will bring again a nice little cool down which will take place over the weekend so we'll see the return of some 60s so we're not yet done with the cool temperatures. Germanita. Thanks, Basil. The fifth edition of the Elevation Awards now won for the books. The award show celebrates the accomplishments of Bahamians in the areas of music, acting, community building, and other fields of entertainment. We have a look back at some of the winners. Elevation Awards. I go. There were 21 award categories and 48 nominees. Walking away with two awards, the Music Video of the Year and Contemporary Song of the Year was Wendy242 for her video, Tell Her Come. The video director in the house. Um, shouts out to Kyle Ferguson, Jiggy Productions. Um, I've been doing all of my visuals with him lately and obviously would not be able to get a music video of the year award without him and the team. Um, I want to thank my whole team, everyone who created that song with me and everyone who was on set. I mean, we blew up a car, guys. I mean, I think that's pretty epic. So thank you. Thank you, Elevation. Talk show of the year went to On the Record with Jerome Sawyer. TV series of the year was Shock Treatment and Radio Personality of the Year was Hope Shelley Ann of 104. One was never designed really to be a television show but really an intervention program the reason why we decided to put it on television because we realized that we didn't have the resources to impact the thousands of young people that would never get in personally so we want to thank all of you that viewed our show 
uh, it's helped so many different people. Musical maestro, composer, songwriter, and producer Fred Ferguson received the Ronnie Butler Lifetime Achievement Award. It is interesting that my professional career started right on this property right here. There was a room called the Back Room in the Balmoral Beach Hotel. That's what this used to be called. And so to see that my professional career started here, full circle where I'm getting awarded the top award in the country in the very same spot. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So I appreciate you all. Thank you all very much, all the performers that sing my songs. I can't believe that, man. I wrote songs that the nation will sing. But the top winner of the night, taking home three awards for Female Artist of the Year, Entertainer of the Year, and Song of the Year was Nishi LS. Elevation Awards, thank you so, so much for paying attention to the standard that has to be set. And thank you for acknowledging the artists and the musicians that have contributed to creating and setting that standard. I appreciate all of you to everyone that played a part, female artists and yeah, y'all. So congratulations again to all of the winners. And that will end the Bahamas Tonight, the weekend edition. We thank you for continuing to make ZNS your number one news and information network as only the sun covers the Bahamas better than ZNS. On behalf of the entire team, thanks for watching and good night. Yeah.